Have you ever had the wrong idea about someone? Everyone at Westlake High warned me about Ms. Keller, the calculus teacher from hell. She'll destroy your GPA, they said. She made Jared cry last semester. The stories were legendary. How she'd call students to the board just to humiliate them. How she never curved tests, even when the entire class failed. How she'd been divorced three times because no one could stand living with her. I needed that calculus credit to graduate, so I was stuck with her class. First day, she lived up to her reputation. Cold, demanding, with eyes that seemed to find every weakness. When I got my first quiz back with a brutal 62% and see me written in red, I nearly dropped the class. After school, my classroom was all she said when I asked what the note meant. I spent the whole day dreading that meeting. When I finally dragged myself to her room at 3.15, the door was closed. I heard voices inside, Ms. Keller and someone else. I hesitated, then knocked. Come in, she called. I opened the door to find Ms. Keller sitting with a small boy, maybe seven years old. He had the same sharp eyes as her, but his were red from crying. This is my son, Elijah, she said without looking up. Elijah, this is one of my students. I need five more minutes with him, then we'll talk about your quiz. I nodded awkwardly and sat at a desk near the door, pretending to check my phone while they worked. The boy was struggling struggling with basic multiplication. What struck me wasn't Ms. Keller's strictness, but her patience. She explained the same concept four different ways until something clicked for him. That's it, she said, when he finally got it right. See, I told you you could do it. The smile that broke across her face transformed her completely. After Elijah packed up his things, Ms. Keller walked him to the door where a woman, presumably a babysitter, was waiting. She kissed his forehead before sending him off. When she turned back to me, the smile was gone, replaced by her usual stern expression, but something had shifted. I couldn't unsee that other version of her. Your quiz, she said, pulling out my paper. The concepts are clearly not clicking. What's your plan? I, I don't know, I admitted. Math has always been hard for me. She studied me for a moment. Do you want to pass this class? Or do you want to understand calculus? Both, I guess. Then you'll need to work harder than you ever have. She pulled out a calendar. I'm here every morning at 6.30 and Tuesdays and Thursdays until 4.30. Pick your times. For the next three months, I showed up twice a week for extra help. It was brutal. She never lowered her standards, never accepted excuses. But slowly, I started to understand. One evening as we wrapped up, I noticed a photo on her desk I hadn't seen before. Ms. Keller in a cap and gown, arm around a frail looking woman in a hospital hospital bed, who was also wearing a graduation cap. She caught me looking. My mother, she was diagnosed with cancer my senior year of high school. I taught myself calculus sitting beside her hospital bed because my teacher said I wasn't college material. She turned the photo away. She lived long enough to see me graduate high school, not college, not my PhD. Is that why you're so tough on us? I asked before I could stop myself. I'm tough because calculus is tough. Life is tough. She paused. And because I've seen too many bright students written off by teachers who couldn't be bothered. On the last day of class, she handed back our final exams. Mine had a 94% at the top, but what caught my eye was the note. Columbia University University's engineering program would be lucky to have you. I looked up in shock. How did you know I applied there? I wrote your recommendation letter. They called yesterday. After everyone left, I stayed behind. Why me? You could have picked any student. Because you showed up, she said simply. When it got hard, you showed up anyway. At graduation, I spotted Ms. Keller in the back row. When they called my name and announced my full scholarship to Columbia, I looked for her reaction. For just a moment, I saw that same smile she'd given Elijah months before. 